In congressional districts around the country this week, candidates are gearing up and getting out, I guess parades in particular yesterday. Increasingly, we're seeing more women, more candidates outside the traditional party structure, and many of them getting a boost from Democratic groups that grew out of the Trump election. One started by a freelance writer who was in his usual coffee shop thinking there has to be a way to channel all this upset about the election of Donald Trump. His answer, a unique grassroots campaign called Swing Left, and it's having a real impact in key races around the country. In a Broadway theater packed with celebrities, the night's unlikely star is a freelance writer turned political power player. He's Ethan Todras Whitehill. And after Donald Trump won, he felt just like these folks did. I was feeling, you know, des despondent, depressed. And like the New Yorkers at this party, he lives in a deep blue congressional district in western Massachusetts. So I was looking for a place where I could make a difference. Um, and I, 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 I found a New York 19 just across the border. He also found out that 75% of Americans have a congressional swing district within 50 miles and believed that if he could convince those blue district Democrats to help out in their nearest winnable district, the House of Representatives could swing left. So he came up with swingleft.org for people like Chris Goldberg. Yeah, if you enter your zip code here, um, so I'm in West Hollywood, very blue district, Yeah, maybe one of the bluest, and a search, and it says what my closest swing district is, which was California 25. And so this and is what I did. And that's where you're standing right now. Yes, it's where I've been standing for the last uh, year or so, coming up here almost every weekend. He's not alone. The website launched the day after the inauguration. By the end of the first weekend, 200,000 people had signed up. Today, it's pushing 400,000. Volunteers like Steve and Melinda. My husband said, let's have a party. I said, sure. He put out the invitation. We got a lot of people really quickly, and then we got over 100, and we realized we had to move from our house down to the church, rented the church hall. Wait, you got over yeah. 100 people? We got almost 200 people. People just waiting for a way to channel their frustration into action. How many of you guys are from outside of this district? Wow. Keep them up. Keep them up. That's amazing. So in California District 25, in the shadow of the Reagan Library, 200 people went canvassing last Sunday. Were you nervous about knocking on doors the first time? Yes, I was very nervous. <laughs> now they tell me it's cathartic, even addicting. I cannot go away. I cannot because every time I go out and meet another Democrat and they say, thank you so much for coming. I can't wait to vote. Add to that swing left manpower, money. They set up innovative district funds. You donate to a district, not a person, and the eventual primary winner gets the cash. In Cal 25, that's Katie Hill. Katie, it's my great pleasure to hand over this check from the grassroots. Thank you so much. You beat a slew of other people on election night. How yep. much money did you have left? Uh, we had almost nothing left. We spent pretty much down to down to zero. The group gave her $164,000, with more coming in every day. Swing Left is now in 78 congressional districts in 29 states. Whole families are turning out, like the Bartlett's. Why Swing Left? It takes a village <laughs> to flip a house. So. Did you make that up? Did it take the village to flip a house? I guess I just did. That's pretty good. <laughs> Back on Broadway, Ethan is winning over more converts. Can Mandy Patinkin, who's famous, knock on doors? Absolutely. That's what we do. That's what we do. That. We are absolutely going to do that. And the party's host, producer Jordan Roth, fresh off winning a Tony, has his eye on a different prize now, control of the house. You either lay down or you say, I'm going to stand up, I'm going to join with you, I'm going to join with you, I'm going to join with you, and I'm going to make this change. Joining me now, MSNBC political analyst and Republican strategist Susan Del Percio, Democratic strategist Bagel Smichael. So they're kind of shattering this traditional model swing left is. They're saying you don't necessarily have to come up through the system. You don't have to depend on the Democratic Party for its organization or even for its money, meaning they're not beholden to the party, right. beholden to the donors. If the Democrats indeed swing left in the House, is it going to be 
in spite of or because <laughs> of the Democratic Party? A little of both, but I, I, first of all, I love the story, by the way, and, and it is. And I think, but I think you're absolutely right. I think in many cases you'll see it be done in spite of the party. You saw that in New York 14 uh, with the Crowley, uh, the Crowley. Alexandria right? Ocasio Cortez. Uh, she is the hottest ticket in she, Democratic politics. She absolutely is, and I think a lot of those, a lot of her voters, and a lot of voters across the country, despite what some of the Democratic machine might say, um, that they want radical change as opposed to incrementalism. Trying to talk about the the policy constraints within your job is just not going to inspire a lot of voters. So um, I do think that in many cases across the country, you're going to see elected uh, people running for office and getting elected in spite of uh, the confines of the party. And, and I think one of the ways you see that is that this group, which did not exist until really after the inauguration in any real way, has raised $4 right. million. It's giving it to a lot of people like Katie Hill, who in many ways is similar to what we saw in New York, right? She's somebody who came up outside of the system. She's somebody who is challenging uh, an established name. There's a, a two-term incumbent Republican who she's going to go up against. But initially, there were like a de dozen Democrats who threw their name out. Mm -hmm. She eventually went up against three of them. So it, if you're still playing by the old party rules, if you're the Democrats or the Republicans for that matter, do you need to start figuring out what's going on out there in America? Oh, yes. I mean, this story is incredible. And this organization is doing something that, as a Republican, I would be very, very afraid of mm -hmm. because they actually are using a single message flip the house, swing left. So it's focused, so right? So focused, and that anyone can go into the district the closest to them that's not a deep blue one that they're looking to flip. It's organized, It's and they're doing more than money. They're bringing bodies, which means they can canvass potential donors who, I mean, excuse me, potential yes. voters who they may not normally ID as people to go out and Well, what's interesting to. here, and because I, I, I spent a lot of time talking to, on um, both days, we were there all weekend long in California 25, and one of the things that has surprised the folks going door to door is people in California 25 are so used to it being Republican, don't realize, not just that Hillary Clinton won there, but that the registrations now slightly favor the Democrats. So they're going to a Democratic door, Basil, and they're saying, Oh, I was like afraid to talk about it. I didn't even know that there were other Democrats in my neighborhood. Well, what's interesting, a majority of seats we need to flip are are, are seats where Hillary won, but are represented by Republicans. Yep. A lot of those in California. So yep. that's a very, you know, it's important that we a acknowledge that that we knock on doors that we did not knock on before, and that we actually have conversations. That's what came out of 2016 that we weren't talking to our neighbors enough. And I think what this, your story suggests is that we're having more of those conversations. Yeah, this is, I mean, what Howard Dean did in 2000. Four, absolutely. is this is just leaps and bounds above it, but I think it will be so um, just tremendously impactful. This, like I said, Republicans should be very afraid of. Well, in the meantime, one of the things that they're hearing a lot about, and again, I had a lot of conversations and, and has motivated a lot of these folks, is the Supreme Court. Peter Alexander uh, has just reported that he's talked to a source who's familiar with the selection process that's going on right now with the president. Uh, and he tells NBC News the three most serious contenders are appeals court judges Brett Kavanaugh, Raymond Kethledge, and Amy Coney Barrett. What do you make of that? Narrowed it it's, down to three. He's supposed to announce it on Monday, so it's four days from now. It's going to be who the president feels is most on his side, who he's not just most comfortable with, but who he thinks will be more with him versus doing their actual duty to the court. He and, wants someone like that. And I know we've been talking a lot about the impact on Roe versus Wade, but there are also so many other issues, restraints on presidential authority, gerrymandering, affirmative action, which we've been talking about for the last two days. Those are Mueller. motivating and Mueller, <laughs> those are motivating issues for a lot of Democrats. Yeah, and I was in Southern California and I was in West Hollywood, LGBTQ, yeah. Yeah, there are absolutely. a lot of peace. But do you feel as though I mean what can the folks on that side who are concerned about it do? Well, you know, that's a that's a problem because people see, feel that they the have house, a, is one thing, right? Doing. Because there's I'm no direct to vote what here. They can do. Um, you know, the problem is it's going to be hard to, to take this nom take a, nom a nominee away from the president. That's what we've been saying. Presidents generally get their nominees, so the most that and we can do is. And angry Democrats will say, "Well, the Republicans did well, it to Barack Obama." They did that. They, we just don't have the numbers, and hopefully, we can in some way, shape, or form, and maybe we flip a couple of senators on the issue of Roe versus Wade. But um, what we can also do is have an impact on the lower courts. Susan, yesterday you told me when we were talking that you thought he might go outside the box. Does this make you feel more like he's going to stick it, with, it with his list? It seems like he would stick with the list, but yeah. again, it's Donald Trump. You still never know. <laughs>
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.